G'day. Welcome. Welcome to this time together. I pray that it would be a time that encourages, challenges, comforts and calls us on in a journey with God. Hear the words of scripture from Psalm 116. I love the Lord for he has heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he has turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. I turn to God. I turn to God. I trust in God. For God is life, love and hope. Let's pray. Loving Father God, as we gather in this place this day, this earth we call home, scattered across time zones and nations and postcodes, we are your children. And it is your spirit that calls us to worship. So we pray for a fresh anointing of your spirit this day. Speak into our hearts and our minds. Transform our living. That others might know. We are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Do you have trouble remembering stuff? In these days where for many people their normal cycles have been thrown out the window, the groups, the meetings, the activities that normally would structure a day are no longer there. I wonder for you how you remember what you need to do and when you need to do it. My technique tends to be writing things on my hand. But I'm trying to get more organised. I live with someone who writes things on notes and then leaves them for me to find. Yesterday I did the family shopping and strawberry jam was on the list. I discovered this morning that 
in my rush to get in and out of the supermarket, I grabbed raspberry jam, not strawberry jam. Even with notes, we don't always get it right. What do you do? What do you do to help you remember the important things? And that might not be shopping lists and days of the week. That might be needing to remember that you are loved. That Christ died for you and rose that you might, might have life and life to the full. We have all sorts of ways. We have rituals. We have places. We have things to do. Symbols to remind us. I know someone who has multiple alarms in their phone to remind them to do the jobs. When they think of a job, they stick an alarm in the phone and look through the day and go, all right, if I set the alarm for this time, then the alarm goes off and they hit snooze. And then the alarm goes off again and they hit snooze. And then the alarm goes off again and they hit snooze because they're busy doing something else. And eventually then they just reset the alarm for tomorrow. But they have a reminder. Yesterday was Anzac Day. The day where in Australia and New Zealand we stopped to remember. And there's all sorts of conversations around that and how that happens and in this context how that has happened and in the lead up the organisation to it happening. But fundamentally Anzac Day is about remembering. The challenge is to remember what's important and not to get caught up in all the fluff and the bother all the chatter and for different people different things are important I remember standing with one old soldier he said to me I hope I am the last man from this district who comes to an Anzac day and remembers fighting in a real war. He knew how bad it could be and he didn't want anyone else to have to do that job. Sadly for him and for us all, we have a new generation of young men and women who have had to go at our government's behest on our behalf and fight. When we remember, when we stop, what is it that we're remembering? And when we have remembered, how do we respond? For that is our challenge. To remember without response is to daydream. The point of the remembering is to inspire an act, an internal act, an external act. Something that happens because we have remembered. The coming together in worship is a means to remember all that God has done, to offer our thanks, to commit ourselves to God's mission and to love those around us. Let's pray. Loving Father God, we remember now those that need help. All those that are battling and struggling, all those that are finding these days hard. As days of isolation run into weeks of isolation. There are for many, Lord God, real struggles. Real sense of disconnection. 
Lord, be present, we pray. Come in powerful ways into the homes of those who are alone. Be good news to them. And for us all, give us the imagination and the creativity, Lord, to make the connection with those who are battling. Come, holy God. Bring healing and hope to this, your creation. Restore and renew, we pray. In this time, in this moment, pour out your spirit afresh. Help us to see the healing and hope that is in you. In Jesus' holy name we ask. Amen. Amen. The song, Take This Moment, Time and Place. Let's sing. Take this moment, sign and space. Take my friends around. Here among us, make the place where your love is found. Take the time to call my name. Take the time to mend who I am and what I've been, all I've failed to tend. Take the tiredness of my days. Take my past yet to be let my life be yours and yet let it still be me amen amen after their time wandering in the desert The people of Israel are finally, under the leadership of Joshua, entering into the promised land. Joshua chapter 4. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from where the priests stood and carried them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe. And he said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of Israel, to serve as a sign among you. And in the future, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. And so they took up the stones 
And they carried them to their night camp, and there they set them together as a memorial to the Lord, a place to bring their children and to tell the story of God's goodness. This has been the word of the Lord. Thanks be to him. The Israelites at the beginning of their journey into the promised land, set up a place of memory. A place to come to, a place to bring the children, the next generation, the next generations. For the old ones are to tell the young ones, who when they are old ones will tell the young ones the story of God, of what God has done, of how God has provided, of how God has led. This is a place of memory, a place of remembering, a place of storytelling. Now, I don't know about you, um, but I am very comfortable with the word story meaning truth and fiction. It doesn't stress me. But I know there are some people out there in the world who get really upset when we talk about the story of Jesus. Because in their heads and their hearts and their, their context, story is always fiction. If that's your space, then can I encourage you most strongly to recover the true meaning of story. A story is a story. It is a narrative of an event, of a people, of an experience. That's it. Whether it's true or untrue, Created or remembered, fact or fiction, they're secondary. The story is just the story. This is the story of the people of Israel moving into the promised land. Your story is your story. And whether you choose to remember your story truthfully or whether you elaborate it with much fiction is up to you. It's still the story. The story of our lives and the story of our faith is simply that. The challenge for us is to ensure that the story we tell When we tell the story of God, when we tell the story of our faith, is truth. And my kids know I love telling fictional stories. I write them all the time. I make them up on the spot. But they also know to look in my eyes and know whether this is a story for entertainment's sake or whether this is a story from which they should learn. And then they can work out whether this is a story that is true or fiction. For Jesus himself told stories. We give them a fancy name. We call them parables. There was a man who built a house on the rock and a man who built his house on the sand. There was a father who had two sons. There was a businessman who owned a vineyard. There was a widow who lost a coin. A shepherd who searched for a lost sheep. They're stories. They're made up stories to teach a truth. But they are not the same as the story of the Lord Jesus Christ born into a specific time of history, raised 
and then crucified and raised again. We have here not only the story of the people of Israel, but a model for life. A model that includes having a time and place to tell the stories so that we remember the important things. For it is a commitment to not forget, to not forget the event, to not forget its significance, and to not forget its ongoing impact. The people of Israel crossed the Jordan and built a place of remembering to go, you know what? God made a promise that we would be here and we are here. The event. The significance. God honours God's promises. God provides. Despite our rebellion. Despite how sometimes hopeless our situation seems, hang in there and God will deliver. The ongoing meaning for the people was now, whatever your context, who do you look to? Now as we live in the land of Jordan, who do we look to? Do we look to having leaders and kings and forgetting about God? Or do we remember that it was God in the first place who did what God said he would do and so it is God now who will do what God needs to do? For us, we need places, we need spaces, we need activities, touchstones, for which we can come to and remember who God is for us. Who he has been, who he is, and who he promises to be, that we might put our trust in him. For God is faithful. And he calls us to trust. And there are all sorts of ways of doing this. But it seems to me that one of the best is the one Jesus himself gave to us. When he took bread and he took wine. And he said to those gathered at the table, do this in memory of me. More about that next week. May the Lord bless you. May you have those touchstones and go to them and remind yourself and those around you of all that God has done and all that he has promised. May the Lord's blessing be upon you this day and in the days to come. To his glory and in Jesus' name. Amen. Loving Father God, we thank you for your story, your story of creativity, your story of love, your story of freedom and reconciliation, healing, hope and wholeness, grace, mercy and holiness. God, creator of all that is, redeemer, thank you for the love that you have shown us, the life that you have given us, and the ways in which you call us back to yourself. Help us this day to find our places of remembering our rituals, our voice, that we might remember and respond 
to your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the mind of Christ my Saviour. Let's sing. go on to whatever this day holds for you. May you do so in the love and grace of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.